Never Stop Learning, week 289. We're gonna take a quick look at the vector shape tools in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. All right, so the vector shape tools that I'm talking about are things like the rectangle tool, ellipse tool, or like the custom shape tool that we talked about a couple weeks ago. All right, you can find these tools over here on the left in the tools panel, down towards the bottom. Currently at the top of the stack, I have the rectangle tool. If I click and hold, it'll show you that I also have, along with the rectangle tool, I have the rounded rectangle tool, the ellipse tool, polygon tool, line tool, and that custom shape tool that I like so much. All right, so for this video, I'm gonna focus mostly on the ellipse tool and the rectangle tool. They all pretty much work the same with some subtle differences between them. All right, so I've got the rectangle tool activated. Now the way it works is just click and drag. All right, you get this little annotation telling you what size you're drawing out your shape at. And then release. Once you release, you have your new vector shape and you'll probably see the properties panel jump out at you. Now don't get scared, it's actually just quick access to some of the functions you're gonna be using all the time. All right, if you want, you could tuck it away, but it's actually gonna pop out in a little bit anyway. Now, just to keep things simple, let's focus on the options bar over here at the top. All right, now starting on the left, this is where you create your new tool. Basically, once you have your settings exactly how you want, save this guy off and you could use that same tool with the same settings on a future project. All right, next in this drop down menu, you could choose what you're actually gonna be drawing out. Currently I'm drawing out a shape, that's why you see it filled in with the color, but you could also choose a path. Let me show you what that does. If I click and drag, all I'm doing is drawing out vectors. I just have anchor points and segments. All right, I'm gonna undo that. Uh, now, over here at the top, switch back. Instead of going with shape, I'm gonna go with pixels. All right, once I come into my document, I see this like Ghostbuster symbol telling me that I can't really draw anything in here. And that's because this is not a raster layer. Over here in the layers panel, this is actually a shape layer. So it's uh, made of vectors. I'm gonna create a new layer. This is made of pixels. Now I could just click and drag to draw out a pixel-based shape. All right, I'm gonna undo that. Now what happens if you try to use this tool on one of these shape layers anyway? Well, if you click, Photoshop's gonna tell you, this shape layer must be rasterized before proceeding. Rasterize this shape. So that means if you say, okay, you're actually gonna rasterize this shape into just a pixel base layer. If you hit cancel, you just back out and nothing happens. All right, so I'm gonna hit cancel. Back over here at the top, I'm gonna switch over to shape. And that's gonna bring back some of those options we saw earlier. All right, currently we have the fill set to black and stroke set to none. That means that the inside of my shape is gonna be filled in with black and the line around my shape basically doesn't exist right now. All right, let's make some changes to this. First thing you wanna do is actually select this path. So you wanna grab the path selection tool by hitting the A key on your keyboard, and that's this black arrow tool you see here. All right, click and drag creates a marquee selection. Once you release, you see that the paths are now selected. So I'm gonna hit the U key on my keyboard, and that's the one that brings you back to the vector shape tools. All right. So now that I have this guy activated, over here at the top, we could change the fill color. All right, so let's go with red. All right, I'm gonna tuck this guy away. Now, this is where you actually change the color. Don't jump into the swatches panel. Notice if I try to go with a blue square, nothing happens, yellow square, nothing happens. All we're doing is loading our foreground color over here on the bottom left section of the screen. All right, so if you wanna change the shape color, go to your fill or your stroke. Now, if you're not familiar with the stroke, that's just the outline around your shape. I'm gonna go with the dark brown and just tuck this guy away. You actually can't see the stroke just yet because notice over here at the top, our stroke is just set to one pixel. So let's increase that. I'm gonna go with 10 pixels, hit enter. All right, so now we have this outline or a stroke around our shape. All right, back over here at the top, I'm gonna hover over the word stroke. And when I do that, my cursor changes and now I have these double-headed arrows. That's a scrubby slider. All right, I'm gonna click and drag towards the right. Notice my stroke is starting to grow. All right, if I go towards the left, now I'm backing off on that change. All right, I haven't released the mouse yet. 
All right, what I wanted you guys to see is that it's growing towards the center. So it's growing inside the shape. So it's not adding anything to it. That's pretty important. All right, I'm gonna release. You could change that behavior just to the right. Click on this drop down menu. These are your stroke options. You got a couple presets here. This is your alignment, caps, and corners. Click on the more options, and this is pretty much like the stroke panel that you see in Illustrator. It's gonna give you full control over your stroke. All right, hit cancel to get out of that. Just tuck this guy away. All right, next, we're dealing with the size of our shape. All right, here's the width and the height. Now, one thing that might confuse you is this little chain in the middle that's gonna be linking these two values. Currently, it's not activated. If you click on it, notice it looks like a button is being pressed down. That means that the link is activated and these two now are connected. All right, I'm gonna break the link between the two. All right, notice there's no gray around it. Let's see what the difference is. Over here for the width, I'm gonna change this to 550 pixels. Hit enter to accept that. And notice it's only growing from, uh, from left to right. Okay, so the top or bottom still the same. Over here for the height, I'm gonna change this to 250 pixels. Hit enter to accept that. And now it's just growing from the, uh, basically it's growing down. The top and bottom is, is now growing. All right, if I connect that link, I'm gonna back off on the height. I'm gonna go with 200 pixels tall. Enter to accept that change. And notice it also backed off on the width. So it's keeping everything nice and proportional for me. If that's important to you, then you wanna make sure that these two values are linked. All right, next, we start having more of the uh, advanced features for this. The first one you see here, there's gonna be your path operations. All right, so if you click on the drop down menu, it's showing us that we're gonna create a new layer each time we create a shape. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a click and drag, then release. Notice over here in the layers panel, we have a new rectangle above our old rectangle. All right, I'm gonna delete that. Now, I wanna switch vector tools. I'm gonna to hit Shift U, Shift U. All right, so that's gonna bring up the ellipse tool. All right, over here, I'm gonna change this to combine the shapes. All right, now when I click and drag, Hold down option so it grows from the center and release. Now we have these shapes combining, not only as far as the appearance goes here, but if you take a look in the layers panel on the right, you'll see that it's all happening on one shape layer. All right, back over here at the top, this same function is actually live. So instead of combining them, let's see what happens if I subtract. All right, so now it's just subtracting that portion in the middle, kind of using that top shape as a cookie cutter and just leaving behind like the dough that's hanging off the edge. All right, so let's see, intersect. All right, so now it just has the portion inside wherever the shapes intersect. All right, so now you get the idea of how this works. All right, I'll leave it to combine shapes. All right, next, I wanna talk about the alignment because this actually tripped me out when I first tried to work with it. Currently, everything's grayed out. And the reason that's happening is because I only have one shape selected. All right, so I'm gonna hit the A key on my keyboard to get the path selection tool. Now I'm gonna click and drag to select both of these shapes. Back in the alignment, now I could choose a horizontal center, all right? And I could even align to the top, do whichever alignments you wish. All right, I'm gonna undo that. And I actually wanna get rid of one of these shapes. Let's throw this one away. All right, Photoshop wants to make sure that that's what I wanna do, yes. All right, I'm gonna hit the U key to activate the ellipse tool again. This time I'm gonna go with new layer. All right, click and drag, draw the same shape out and release. Notice the appearance is not combining them. And over here in the layers panel, we have two separate layers. All right, so if I select both of those shapes and I could do that by targeting both layers, grabbing my path selection tool and then selecting both of the paths. Now when I jump into the alignment, Notice everything's grayed out. The reason it's grayed is because these shapes are on two separate layers, all right? It's only gonna work on one shape layer at a time, so we wanna get rid of that. There's a different way to align with that, but I just wanted to show you that in case you see these guys grayed out and you're wondering why. All right, I'm gonna come back to the ellipse tool by hitting U. I wanna combine my shapes, and I'll draw that same circle I've been drawing. All right, something like that, there we go. 
Now what I want to talk about is the stacking order. Now this was another feature that kind of threw me for a loop, uh, but I figured it out thanks to my friend Carlos Garro. All right, now it's actually going to work in combination with your path operations. So here I'm going to subtract a uh, front shape. All right, so I only have these edges over here. Now, if I come back over here to the stacking order and send that same shape to the back, keep in mind, I have the ellipse selected. You can see it over here in the path. I'm going to choose select uh, send shape to back. All right, now it changes everything. All right, I'm going to come back over here, send shape to front, and it's back to the behavior that we thought. All right, so I just wanted to show you these two work in combination, basically because uh, your path operations are live. If you no longer want them to remain live, let's say you want, the, want it to be a solid weld, then you choose this feature over here, Merge Shape Components. And once you choose that, you're just going to be left with the shapes over here on the edge. All right, I'm going to undo that. And let's come back over here, Combine Shapes. And that's it for these features. Now, uh, this little gear wheel, this is going to change um, how you're drawing, what you're drawing. I'll show you what I mean. If I click on the drop down menu, you have these really cool options here. If you're working with a circle, you can actually choose a specific diameter. Uh, the fixed size is for the rest of the shapes. Uh, proportional, you can keep a different proportion there, a specific proportion. And you could also align from center. So let me turn a couple of these on and show you how it works. All right, we'll turn on from center, proportional, return to accept that change. All right, now I'm going to click and drag and notice I'm drawing out a nice clean circle and it's coming out from the center, right? And no matter where I put my cursor, I'm not gonna be distorting my circle. It's gonna be nice and clean. All right, I'll release, and then just go ahead and delete that guy. All right, back over here, I'm gonna switch this back to how it is by default, just because I'm used to working that way. All right, the last feature you're gonna see here is align to edges, and I have this one turned on. Now what that feature does is it aligns your uh, vector shapes to the pixel grid. All right, so I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see the pixel grid. And you'll see it aligns it perfectly. So I have complete squares. None of those squares are cut in half. And that's going to make sure that I don't have any anti-aliasing, which is going to be important if I'm creating, like, let's say, an app, a game, or mocking up a website, anything like that. All right, so that takes care of the options bar over here at the top. I wanted to show you some of the features over here in the properties panel. All right, so I'm going to get rid of one of these guys. I'll hit the A key to grab my path selection tool. Select the path I want to delete, and then just hit delete. Photoshop's going to ask, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm going to say yes. All right, now I want to select this uh, rectangle that I have here. Now, if you look at the properties, you're going to see some of the features that we already went through. So here you can change the size. You could actually change the positioning here. And then you have some of the appearance functions in here. But this is what I wanted to show you, this section uh, towards the middle. This is going to control your corners. First, I want to click on this link so that all of these values are connected. All right, now that I got them all connected, check this out. I'm gonna hover over one of these corners, then I get those scrubby sliders we talked about earlier. I'm gonna click and drag towards the left, nothing happens, but if I go towards the right, I'm starting to create some corners over there in my shape. All right, I'm gonna release, and now I have all of the corners rounded off by 70 pixels. Now I could break this link, and then just affect one corner at a time. I'll bring this guy to the left. All right, notice the top left corner is now gone. Now take a look at over here on the bottom right section. All right, I'm gonna click and drag, start removing that guy. I like how it looks, nice and smooth, and release. So you have full control over your corners in this section of the properties panel. Down at the bottom, you have those same uh, pathfindering operations that we were playing around with earlier. So there you have it folks, that's a detailed look at the Vector Shape Tools in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017.